the heavy oak door closes slowly behind you as you enter the corridor of the ancient castle. You look at the fine art and tapestries as you wander along when you suddenly feel like someone is watching you. You have a feeling of dread and know you have to run. You run out of the building and into the courtyard. It's dark, but you feel safe. Welcome to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. I am Clem Dalloway, and this episode is about the ghosts and history of Dudley Castle and Zoo in the West Midlands, England. Dudley Castle looks over the town of Dudley on a limestone hill, which is one of the highest points in the West Midlands. The land was held by the Saxon Earl Edwin in 1066, brother to Edith Swanwick, the wife of Harold Godwinson. Earl Edwin revolted against the Normans in 1070 and lost his lands, which were given to Ansculf de Picony who is believed to have built the first wooden Motton Bailey castle on the site as a defensive structure to protect the area from the Welsh. After his death, the land was passed on to his son, William Fitzansculf, whose name appears in the Doomsday Book of 1086. Eventually, the castle came into possession of the Paganel family, who rebuilt the castle in stone. In 1138, King Stephen laid siege to Dudley Castle because Ralph Paganel, 4th Baron of Dudley, supported Matilda, Stephen's cousin and real heir to the throne. Stephen failed to breach the castle and in anger and frustration burned the houses and stole the cattle from the surrounding countryside before capturing the castle in Shrewsbury. By 1150, Ralph Paganel's son, Gervais, held the manor. He became involved in a failed rebellion against King Henry II in 1173. That resulted in an order to have the castle demolished. It is unknown how much of the castle was destroyed, but it was still used as an unfortified manor until the latter end of the 13th century, after it was taken over by Gervais's nephew, Ralph de Sommery in 1194. Roger de Summary started to rebuild the castle in 1262, but it was incomplete in 1272 when he died. But the building work was carried on after his death into the 14th century by his heirs. In 1321, the last in line of the Summaries, John Summary, passed away and the castle was inherited by his sister Margaret and her husband, John de Sutton, whose family members often used Dudley as their surname. In 1325, the castle was seized by a favourite of Edward II, Hugh de Spencer, until the king fell from power and John and Margaret took it back a year later. After the death of John Sutton, his son, John Sutton II, inherited the castle, who passed the castle on to his wife Isabel, daughter of John de Charlatan, who held it until her death in 1397. By 1532, the castle was owned by another John Sutton, who fell into money problems, and so in 1537, the castle was taken over by his relative, John Dudley, who later became the Duke of Northumberland. John Dudley was the great-grandson of John Sutton, 
the first Baron of Dudley, who rose to prominence during the reign of Henry VIII. He commissioned new buildings in the castle grounds around 1540, which became known as Sherrington Range, named after the architect William Sherrington, who designed and built these new additions. John Dudley was executed in 1553 for being involved in helping Lady Jane Grey onto the throne. The castle was returned to the Sutton family by Queen Mary to Edward Sutton. In August 1575, Queen Elizabeth I visited Dudley Castle and considered it to be a possible place to imprison Mary, Queen of Scots. Edward Sutton III was the last male in line to inherit the castle and due to financial struggles passed the castle on to his granddaughter Francis Sutton who married the son of a wealthy merchant Humble Ward. During the English Civil War a royalist garrison held the castle who were commanded by Colonel Thomas Leveson a local Catholic. The castle was seized by parliamentary forces led by Sir William Brereton in 1644 and was surrendered on the 13th of May 1646. The castle was then partly demolished to prevent it being used again, but some of the habitable buildings were still used. The Earls of Dudley still visited the site, but when they visited the Midlands, they resided at Himley Hall, four miles away. In 1750, a great fire took out most of the remaining buildings and was left to ruin until the 19th century, when it was tidied up by the Earls of Dudley to be used as a romantic ruin, which had become fashionable at this time. In the 1930s, William Humble Eric Ward, the third Earl of Dudley, created a zoo in the grounds of the castle, which opened to the public in 1937 and is still open to visitors today along with what's left of the castle. The Undercroft is believed to be the most haunted part of the castle. There are two stone coffins that are stored in the Undercroft. One was found at a local church and a larger one found at Dudley Priory and is to believe to be the coffin of John Somery, also known as the Bad Baron. In 1994, a cleaner was on her hands and knees in the Undercroft when she heard a laugh. She looked ahead and saw a pair of boots with spurs attached next to the larger of the stone coffins. She looked up to see who was standing there but she could only see the boots. Her sister, also a cleaner, walked in seconds later and also had a brief glimpse of the boots before they disappeared. Both ladies were in shock, so they went to the castle restaurant for a cup of tea and told the catering staff, some of who went into the Undercroft, to investigate but found nothing peculiar. In 2002, a group of paranormal researchers conducted an investigation in the castle. The Undercroft was the first place they wanted to start, and the first experiment was to spread out and stand in various places in the room, in the dark. Five out of the twelve members of the group said that they experienced being touched by cold hands. They were poked, clothes tugged, and all felt the temperature drop. One of the ladies in the group was so terrified that she ran out. As she ran out, she said that she saw a shadowy figure near the doorway. During the English Civil War, Colonel Thomas Leveson held the castle, and his second in command was John Beaumont, who also brought his wife, Mary Beaumont, to live in the castle. On the 13th of September, 1644, Mary gave birth to a baby named Francis, 
who died just after birth and was buried on the same day in St Edmund's Church. After suffering from severe depression from the loss of her baby, Mary died on the 27th of April, 1646, during a siege of the castle by parliamentary forces. Colonel Leveson ordered the destruction of the church, as it would have been a great advantage point for the parliamentary army. The ghost of a grey lady has been seen many times over the years, around the keep area, which is believed to be the shade of Mary Beaumont. As Mary was buried at the top church, it is believed that her ghost is searching for her baby, who was buried at St Edmund's Church, also known as Bottom Church. Near the keep and in the pub on the castle grounds, named the Grey Lady Tavern, there have been many unexplained sounds, alarms going off at night and extreme drops in temperature that is often accompanied by a blue mist. In 1987, two entertainers were booked to perform for the summer season, and each night they camped in the courtyard. Late one night, they saw the dark shape of a woman standing at the top of the castle mound. She disappeared as quick as she appeared. She has also appeared in the chapel window and in the old aquarium, and many members of the public have reported seeing her on regular occasions in the daytime. Near to the castle lie the ruins of the 12th century St. James's Priory, which was given to Benedictine monks from much Wenlock. Staff and visitors have seen the ghost of a monk wearing a black habit, which is the same as the Benedictine monks around the keep area and in the castle's chapel. In 1995, a couple were visiting the castle when they noticed a monk looking out of the window. They thought that it may be a visiting monk or a member of staff in costume, but when they approached him, he disappeared. An old woman is believed to have once lived in the keep. A story says that she hung herself from the battlements on Halloween, and her black cat was found dead underneath her body. Another story says that a gang of boys were climbing on the walls of the battlements and found the old woman with her black cat preparing to fly to the Sabbath. It is said they tied a rope around her neck and threw her and the cat off the battlements. She was buried outside the walls of St Edmund's churchyard. On the site of the original churchyard of St Edmund's, stands a 17th century stone building that was once the estate offices for the Earl of Dudley. It's now the offices for Dudley Zoo, which is on the castle grounds. There may have been a church on the side from Saxon times, but the present church was built in 1724 after the previous church was demolished during the English Civil War. Footsteps have been heard around the offices when it's empty and many staff members often catch something from the corner of their eye. In 1992, as he was leaving to go home, the assistant manager said that he suddenly felt freezing cold. The hairs on the back of his neck stood up and he had a tremendous feeling of dread. He was so scared that as he opened the door, he broke the door handle off with his hand. Many people have heard the sound of a drum playing different roles, echoing through the castle walls. It's believed to be the ghost of a young drummer boy who was killed by a stray bullet during the siege from the parliamentarians during the Civil War. It's believed to be bad luck if you hear the drums or see him due to his unfortunate death. In 1983, the castle held a medieval evening with a fancy dress competition. The judges noticed an elderly woman who looked like she was wearing very authentic medieval clothes. 
She was wearing a sackcloth with a grey shawl and rags wrapped around her feet. They awarded her with the first prize, but she was suddenly nowhere to be seen. The staff working on the gates said that they hadn't seen her go past. In 1967, the South Staffordshire Metaphysical Society announced that they were going to hold an investigation at the Castle and Zoo. The group had heard that strange sounds had been heard in the aquarium and they were going to attempt to record them. Once it went into the local newspaper, more stories came to light. There are stories of the haunted wall where bangs and voices would be heard and incidences of tropical fish disappearing without a trace. In the 1930s, three friends were visiting the castle when they were stood at the bottom of the keep steps where they saw an elderly couple dressed in 17th or 18th century costume, walking arm in arm. The man was wearing a tall hat and had a crooked walking stick. They walked past the three visitors and walked up the steps. One of the group followed them up the single staircase, but found no one was there. In 2003, three friends went on a paranormal investigation to experience what happens during these events. When they entered the main door and into the corridor, they all felt a strange, bad feeling and they ran down the corridor until they reached the gift shop where they told the organisers of the night. A few weeks later, one of them took his wife and children for a day out to the castle and zoo. When they entered the main door and into the corridor, their three-year-old son suddenly started to panic and scream in terror. He started running down the corridor with his dad following him into the gift shop. Staff stopped him from going outside, but his dad took him outside for fresh air. He was still terrified and took around 15 minutes to calm down. When he finally calmed down, his dad asked what was wrong. He said that a nasty man with a sword was trying to hit him. Thank you for listening to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Ghost Tales Podcast. You can also find us on Instagram at Ghost Tales Podcast. This podcast will be out monthly and is available on most podcast platforms. All music, research, writing, production, art and sound effects are all my own work.